Hi there guys, welcome back to a brand new tutorial by myself, Mr Feudal. Today we're going to be covering how to create your first character in Life is Feudal. This tutorial is really aimed at new players, so I hope this helps you. Thanks again for watching. Hi there guys, welcome to the character creation tutorial. Now, the first thing you want to do is you want to join a world. If you want to join multiplayer, you can join single player if you want. You can create a world. For the sake of this tutorial, I am going to create a new character on my own favourite server. So, here we go. There you can see my skills. So, what I'm going to show you here is a little bit about strength, agility, constitution, intellect and willpower. Luck is a skill that you cannot really alter without the use of items on your character. So, here we go. So create a new character. This is what you're presented with. You're presented with a blank character standing there. Give him a name. Give him a name. I'm going to call mine Mr. Feudal. Gender, male. You can alter your cosmetics and your voice to your own preference. For the moment here, I'm just going to rattle through these ones and actually just assign my own. So haircut four, haircut three, uh, Hair colour, ginger, body features, painted warrior, skin tone, wee bit darker. There we go. Appearance settings. So these are the important things I really want to talk about here. So strength. What is strength? Strength is basically a measure of how hard you can hit in this game. So say for example you have a two-handed sword and you've got 15 strength. You're gonna you're not gonna really hit very hard with that sword. It might be the best of quality, you're not gonna do a lot of damage. So if you want a character that has high damage, pump all of your strength up to about 30 or 40. That is my recommendation. This also determines the effectiveness of the weapon that you actually carry. So for example, if you're carrying a two-handed sword, as I said, with 15 strength, you're going to swing very slow. You're not going to swing very fast. So agility also plays, plays into this. So agility is basically governing your ranged weaponry as well. It also determines the frequency of how fast you can actually attack and how fast you can move. So agility matched with strength can be very deadly. So if you've got 40 strength and 40 agility, you're probably a very, very good soldier warrior class. So as I said, agility determines what you can use in terms of range. So that means if you can use a sling, a javelin, a Francesca throwing axe, a crossbow, a bow, those kind of things, or even naphtha bombs. You can even detect that can even determine that as well. The next one is constitution. Constitution governs your health as well as your player carry limit. Let me just explain what that means. Your hard HP and soft HP that's constitution in a nutshell, okay? Constitution means how much you can actually take before you die. Now, it also means how much your character can actually equip. So, see on the game, when you press T, you can show your character equipables. So, you can attach armor and tools and jewelry, a tabard, etc. This skill governs how heavy those things will be. So, if you had plate armor and you had low constitution, you will not run or walk very fast. It'll almost seem like you're you're overburdened, but you're not. Now, the next skill I want to talk about is willpower. Willpower determines how long you can run. That is your stamina, your hard and soft stamina. So, it also dictates how much you can carry in your inventory. So, as you can see, some of these, these attributes have effects across kind of two or three things, really. Willpower determines how much you can actually carry in your inventory. This is totally separate from your character equipable limit. So, constitution determines the effective equipment weight that you can actually carry, and willpower determines how much you can actually carry in your inventory. Now, intellect, in my opinion, is a waste of a skill, but some people might see this a bit differently. Each skill of intellect grants you two skill cap points. So say for example I join a server that has 3000 as its skill cap. If I crank all of my intellect into 
say 21, that'll allow me to get 42 points added to my uh, my total skill cap. So it's up to you guys. In my opinion, this is I'll show you exactly what my character would look like going straight into a game. This is what it would look like. Bam. That is exactly what it would look like. 25 willpower, a lot of carry weight, and you can run for ages. That is my preference. Strength and agility and a constitution level up with time with each action that you craft something. Or, for example, if you pick up a log, these are all determined by actions in the game. So, crafting skills, I'll show you exactly why I would give myself these crafting skills. Artisan is the dominant skill in construction so i want to crank that straight to 30 now i want to leave nature's lore at 20 because i can because when you enter the game you're going to be using nature's lore anyway to gather up sticks branches uh, plant fiber flint stone you can gather all of these things fairly quickly and it levels up fairly quickly as well hunting you don't really have to bother with because you're going to be hunting anyway combat skills crank it all into chivalry boost it all into chivalry make sure it's all in chivalry because that is an early weapon an early battle axe and an early flanged mace as soon as you get an anvil and forage up you can wield those weapons straight away i hope this helped you guys i've made this as short as possible and the explanations as brief as possible if you liked the tutorial give it a like if you want more tutorials subscribe and ring the wee bell for more if you if you feel i've missed something out Comment in the comment section below and we'll have a wee chat about it. Thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you all in the next tutorial. Thanks very much.